Now, the purpose of this video is to show you how we could use the toolbar up here to see what options we're choosing at any given time. For example, let's say I'm recording some guitar. And I want to record on top of this item. And by default, Reap is going to create takes like this. Reaper created another take, which you can choose from by using the T key for take one or take two. And that's how Reaper behaves by default. But we could change that behavior if we go up here to the options menu and choose overlapping recording behavior and change it from the default, which is creating takes, the trim existing items, or tape mode. And if we choose this and record on top of this guitar, It doesn't record takes. Instead, it records on top of the other guitar or replaces it. Personally, I tend to use both of these options quite often for different purposes. But it's not very convenient to have to go to the options menu each time to either change it or check to see which mode we're in. The default with takes or tape mode that replaces the current media. But luckily, we can use our toolbar buttons to switch modes but also see which mode we're currently in. So you can right click up here, go to customize toolbar and go down here and right click. I'm going to create a separator to create some room, right click again, insert action and type into the filter new recording. And here are the options we want to go through. Right over here is the default action, which creates takes and over here is tape mode. So let's choose both of them, hit select close, and it puts both of them down here. Let's put the separator above it. This one creates takes, and this one is tape mode. And we could add our own toolbar buttons over here just by right clicking. Let's go to our filter and type in take. And for the first one, I'll use this button. And for the second one, for tape mode, I'm going to use this button. So it'll look like this. Hit OK. It adds those buttons up here. Now we can choose which mode we want to use, whether it be takes or tape mode, right from here. But more importantly, we'll always know which mode we're in. If we want to record takes, choose this one. And it records takes. Or if I want to use tape mode and record on top of the items, we could see it right here. And we get that behavior. But there's another option we could also use, and that's creating lanes when we record, which is a feature that was added in Reaper 7. So again, if we go to the options menu and choose overlapping recording behavior, we could choose to add lanes right here. And if we choose this, and record on top of this item. Instead of creating takes or recording on top, it creates lanes. Lane one and two, which we could use by creating some comping, go between them with the T key and comp to this lane. But that's another mode we could use, but again, we have to first go to the options menu under overlapping recording behavior and choose add lanes over here. Again, by default, this is off, but we could use the toolbar buttons to do the same thing. Right click, customize toolbar, right click, insert action, and this time we'll choose toggle new recording, adds lanes. Select and close, puts it down here. Right click the button. I'm going to type lane over here. And I'm going to choose this button for this. Hit OK. Now it looks like this. Again, if you want to record takes, just choose this. We get takes. If you want to record on top, 
or tape mode, just choose this. But if we want to record with lanes, just choose this option instead. Now Reaper creates separate lanes for each pass we record. And now, because we created toolbar buttons for each, we always know which mode we're in. So if you want to record takes, choose this, or tape mode, or finally lanes. And we could use the toolbar for so many more options. Like another favorite, let's duplicate this item by moving it over here. And notice when we put it on top of the other item, both items are going to play at the same time. They're basically layered on top. And that's because if we go to the options menu, trim content behind media items when editing is off. And it's off by default. So at all times, we could put items on top of each other and they basically layer. But if we don't want that behavior, we could turn this option on. And now, if I put this item on top, it trims this one. So now it's no longer there. If I put this one on top of this one, it trims underneath, creating three separate items. So that behavior is off by default. But if you're like me and you find both modes useful, you have to go back to the menu and change it each time. But again, we're not going to be able to see which mode we're in without checking in this menu unless we create a toolbar button. So let's leave this off, which it is by default. And let's right click over here, customize toolbar, and let's add another button. Right click, add a separator, which we'll put at the bottom. Right click again, insert action. And this time we'll type in trim content. And we could choose this option trim content behind media items when editing. Select and close it. And we can see by default, it already creates a button we could use. Let's put the separator above it, hit OK. Now it shows up over here. And again, by default, it's off. So if I duplicate this item and place it over this one, they both layer or sit on top of each other. So it's not trimming as we drag it over. But if we want that behavior, just turn it on over here and then drag it on top, and it trims this item. As we drag it and drop it, we put this one on here. It creates three separate ones, always trimming as we drag it on top of other items. But again, by default, this is off. But if you're like me, and you like to jump back and forth in different modes, it's good to see which mode we're in. So instead of having to go to this menu each time, we'll always know if this is on or off, just by looking up here and turning it on when we need it and off when we don't. So there's one more example I want to show you. By default, when we play back our track. The metering on our tracks is post fader. So if I open up the mixer, See the meters over here. If I adjust my faders, notice the level disappears as I bring down the faders. Bring it up. We see it and our meters adjust to that level post fader. But sometimes we want to see it pre fader. And there's an option up here in the options menu for pre fader track metering. If we choose this, even if we bring down our faders, we still see the level on our tracks. In fact, it's the exact same level no matter what. No matter where we put our fader, the level is the same. Because it's not based on our fader, it's pre-fader. So if you're like me and you like to jump back and forth, you might want to create a toolbar button for this as well. Again, we'll right click up here, customize toolbar, go down here, 
create a separator, insert an action, pre-fader track metering, select and close it, shows up down here. Let's give it a toolbar button. I'm gonna choose this one, hit okay. And it looks like this for pre-fader metering. So with it off, it's post-fader. So the meters are based on the fader level. But if we want pre-fader metering, just turn it on right here. And now our meters are pre-fader. So even with the faders all the way down, we still see the same level on our meter. As it's not based on our fader, it's just based on what we recorded to the track. As we can see right here. But if we want to go back to the default, just change it here. And we'll always know which metering we're using. Post fader or pre fader. So as you can tell, there's a lot of different uses for our toolbars. But I like to use them so I can see what mode I'm in. And you could use this for any options you want. Just right click and customize the toolbar, insert an action, and just search under options for all the options you might want to switch between and see which option we chose. Whether it be pre fader metering or trim content behind media items when editing or the different modes for recording, for creating takes, tape mode, or recording into lanes. So that's pretty much it. Those are my favorite toolbar options in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.